Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, and Coach, another week where your team played two very good games. One ended up being another very close loss on the road, but you came home and finally got that first conference home victory. So disappointing in Tallahassee. Really a great team. I think Florida State could be a Final Four team, and we play our backsides off right down to the wire and, and couldn't finish, had our opportunities, bounced back, Really played well, uh, I thought, in the second half uh, against Wake Forest. And uh, uh, it was a tale of two press conferences after the game. I, uh, I crossed the line uh, in Tallahassee and I, and I paid my dues. And man, I was a lot better after the uh, Wake Forest game. I know it was very important to you. The university was fined $20,000, but on Monday morning, you yeah. went into Jim Frawley's office, the deputy AD, and gave him a personal check for 20 grand. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to pay that fine. I am not going to put that on, on the university. And uh, sometimes you just make your point and take your medicine, point made, and we moved on. <laughs> Every week to 10 days, I really look at all of the ACC statistics. And it jumped out at me. You are the second leading scoring team in the ACC, both non-conference and in-conference play. You know, there's where we've gotten better from last year to this year. You know, we, we, we couldn't score out of the 60s. We were good with the ball last year. We had 100 more assists and turnovers. We're great with the ball again this year, but we're starting to make those shots. And I think a lot of it is, uh, kind of our sophomores at being an X factor and kind of finding their way in the midst of things. Our seniors, they're, they're maxing out who they are right now. So we need those other guys to kind of come on and keep getting better. When we come back, we're going to take you down to Tallahassee, Florida, a sold out Tucker Center for another Notre Dame basketball game that came down to game situations. <laughs> Florida State pulled out all the stops for you, their first sellout of the season. They had a blackout, and yet your guys are ready. You hit five of your first eight shots. You jumped out to a 15-4 lead. Got off to a great start. We were very excited to play uh, against a great team in an unbelievable road atmosphere. We've loved playing on the road and loved the challenge of it. Um, but eventually, their athletic ability and their shot making, you know, this is a Florida State team that has morphed into a better shooting team than we've faced in previous years and man did they have guys come off the bench that sometimes don't make the scouting report go off on us as athletic and deep as they are they had trouble with John Mooney early he had seven of your first 15 and scored 11 in the first half well I think John was very excited to be playing back in the state of Florida his brother is a Florida State grad his whole family was there and John Mooney continues to just do what he does it's really an amazing physical display to do what he does every night in this league you knew Leonard Leonard Hamilton was going to throw a lot of guys at you, and he did 11 in the game. After a good one three put you up 10, that pressure started to wear you down, and Florida State went on an 18 0 run. They got going. They did wear us down a little bit. Their defense is tricky to play against. They switch everything, they're pressuring the ball. You really can't run any of your sets. You've got to play basketball. I thought we had some turnovers that were uncharacteristic of us um, on out-of-bounds unders, live ball turnovers that sparked that run, and now the whole building's alive. There's something about road games and Prentice Hub. All season on the road, he's been great. He was again in this game. He stepped up his game in the second half, scoring 18 of his 24 points to help you get back in it. I think there's something about the away crowd getting on him and on our team that lights him up a little bit more. He has been fearless on the road, and I'm thrilled with how he's leading and playing. Now, you were still down six with 27 seconds left, and you almost pulled it off. Hub hit a huge deep three, and then Durham stole that inbounds pass, scored, got hammered, we'll let that go, <laughs> and then you force a five-second violation. You know, we we did everything there, and, and you're right, like, Jawan with a great play on the ball and probably did get hit a little bit on the on the putback. So you couldn't ask for it. You know, here you are with a possession out underneath with a chance to win it. And we've executed a lot of out-of-bounds unders in the, you know, we win in Maui with an executed out-of-bounds under with Rex taking it out. We get the three-point shot for Nate against Toledo to put it into overtime with Rex taking it out. So I like Rex kind of reading everything on the out-of-bounds under. 
So another gut punch, you lose it 85-84 to the fifth ranked team in the country, and yet this team just does not let down its resilience. I think we, we, we're pretty darn tough, Jack. You know, they get in the locker room afterwards, there's not crazy emotion, they're very business-like. We talked about things we could have done better. I told them how proud I was of them to put it, and, and that let's go back, we've got a home stand, and let's see if we can get a one-game win streak under our belt in this league. And it was something that had been hard to come by because Notre Dame had lost all three previous games on its home floor by a total of six points. We'll show you how they did against Wake Forest right after this timeout. Fell behind Wake Forest 9-2, but then a guy you have been waiting to break out all season, Nate Leshesky does. He scores seven of your next nine points to get you right back. As Ryan Humphrey's been saying for the last two weeks, Nate Leshesky is due, coach. Let's just keep getting him through there. That's what a good assistant does, and and uh, and he was due. And I, and I feel almost like maybe that was an awakening moment for him, and we'll think about the Wake game when we look back at his career, but he came off the bench, gave us energy, driving the basketball, shooting the basketball. Nate, uh, people can't see it maybe, he is a great team defender. He really guards, he gets out on guards when there's a ball screen, he, he leads us in charges taken. He's a very smart and active defender and he helps our defense too. Dane Goodwin was also really good in the first half with seven points, including a big three-point play that cut Wake Forest lead down to two. Well, I think we've got, with our sophomores, Hub has joined the party. We've seen it. Goodwin has joined the party. And now do we have Leshesky joining the party? That is my dream to get all three of them firing together. But I love Dane Goodwin. He's not turning shots down anymore. He's being aggressive. Now, Wake Forest did have a five-point halftime lead in part because of Brandon Childress. No surprise, he was outstanding. He had 16 first-half points. We didn't do a good job with the ball screen defense in the first half, and he got comfortable getting down at 15 feet and into the lane and making plays and shooting the jump shot. We did a better job. We adjusted our ball screen coverage. We were more aggressive when he used the ball screen, and that really helped us in the second half. You quickly erased the Demon Deacons lead in the second half. Mooney tied it with a three-point play, and then Rex Fluger gave you the lead with his second three-point bomb of the night. Well, Rex Fluger is shooting the ball better because he's, he's just taken ones that are great ones for us. We know he does everything else for us. Guard, jump on a dive on the floor for loose balls up there with assists, but he's making some key jump shots for us, and he is a good shooter. He's a better shooter than everybody thinks. He's never gonna be a high volume three-point shooter, but he's a fearless young man. This year's team is a good free throw shooting team, not as good statistically as some of your past teams, but you certainly were against Wake Forest. You made eight of nine free throws down the stretch, 22 of 25 in the game. It was a huge weapon for you. Yeah, and, and it, it should be a better weapon, and maybe we're trending that way. We, we, we should be up around the league leaders in that. That's always been something we've done. I love that we got to the line because we drove the ball on that. So the Irish close it out. They beat Wake Forest 90 to 80 for their first home court conference win of the year. As we go to break, here's an inside look at Notre Dame's third conference win of the year. Fluger, right foul line, extended for three, knocks it down. Good one, the runner in the lane is good, and he gets fouled. Great job by Leshesky to get that rebound. Gibbs three right side, got it! Mooney wheels into the lane for the jump hook, that's good. Fluger with a basketball now, his three-pointer on the way, left side is good. Gets it to Goodwin, Goodwin for three right side, got it! Big bucket by Goodwin. Leshesky spins, double pumps, puts it off the glass and in. Bounce pass to Goodwin, reverse layup, up and good. Gibbs, double pumps, reverse layup, up and good, and he gets fouled. Wow. To Childress and Danny Manning's calling off the dogs. That's going to do it. It's the Irish win it here tonight, 90 to 80 over Wake Forest. The more hostile the atmosphere, the better Notre Dame guard Prentice Hub plays. But Hub brings more than just basketball prowess to each game. He brings swagger, a confidence and aggressiveness that is evident by the way Hub carries himself on the court, a demeanor that helps infuse confidence in his teammates. The swagger is also embodied by the numerous tattoos that adorn Hub's body, with each tattoo having a story to tell. 
I really think they're really cool and they can tell a, a good story. So these are my tats and these are my stories. So this is my first tattoo around like age 16, 17. The clock, it says since, and then the time is set to 319, day of my birthday. I got the rose to remember my mom. I just got this tattoo to always like let my brother know that I'm gonna always have his back and that nothing can separate us. I got this tiger right here. I got it because tigers are fearless and that's like what I wanna have within me. Got Jesus on the cross right here and then the gates to heaven. I also got this, the 301 tattooed on me. That's uh, my area code where I'm from. Just know I'm always like repping that and stuff, so. It's not just like marks. It's all about perspective and what you want to express through your heart and mind. Tattoos, they all tell a story. Each story is different, and these are my stories. You heard me mention Swagger, and we introduced that piece on Prentice's tattoos. What does Prentice's Swagger, his confidence, mean to this team? Well, I think we've seen it mostly on the road. You know, when you think the really the, 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 the chips are down and you don't have a chance, he makes his teammates believe, makes his coach believe. I think he loves uh, answering back. You know, he, he shoots the air ball at Georgia Tech, they chant air ball, and then he goes on a run. And, and I've got to find someone to get on him in our home games. So he, he maybe I should. But uh, there is an edge about him. There's a swagger about him. There's a confidence about him. I, I just love coaching him. And his personality is starting to come out now as he grows older here at Notre Dame. It's bizarre, but I guess you could ask the Legion to start getting on Prentice early in games just to see how he reacts to That's a thought, <laughs> that's a thought. I'm open to everything to light his fire at home. He would know you were behind, <laughs> I know. there's no question. <laughs> Folks, this week's fan question for Coach Bray is coming up right after this timeout. It's time for this week's The Experts at Tyrac.com question of the week. For Coach Bray, this week's question comes from Austin Gall of Wakarusa, Indiana. Coach, with fewer players on your roster, how do you keep the players fresh throughout the game? Well, we actually, the other night, we, we got Nick in there and went to an eighth guy. With, Juwan was in a little bit of foul trouble, and that's helped us. Um, you're just trying to rotate guys through, and, and I think now we have a substitution pattern on how we sub and get through. The assistants do a good job of leaning over and going, hey, let's get Johnny one right now. I may lose track, especially of our big guys where they are. Hump will go, let's get Juwan one, let's get Johnny one. And um, again, you know, you got to stay plugged into that. And then the important part of it is how you practice in between games, you know, to refresh legs and get them ready. And you don't practice long, but you're very productive when you do practice. Yeah, I think we're pretty, and you gotta remember this group now has probably had over 100 practices together when you start the summer. So changing the routine, keeping it fresh, doing different things, spending a little more time in the weight room, doing cardio there instead of pounding your legs on the court, just changing it up to keep it fresh. But these guys love basketball. When I'm, I'm over here a lot yeah. now. 45 minutes before practice, almost everybody's already here. They're all here 30 minutes beforehand. They stick around 30, 40, 45 minutes after practice shooting and working on their games. And that's why you don't practice long when I'm in the gym because we do have in our culture that gym rat work on your game stuff. So if I know Mooney's going to be here 30 minutes before and 20 minutes after, maybe we only practice 30 minutes when I'm in the gym. So you, you take that, I learned that with Troy Murphy. He would come back at night and I said, well, then we're not gonna practice as long at three o'clock if you're gonna come back at night and not listen to me about rest. So, you know, there's a balance point where I'm always trying to figure it out to keep them fresh. There were many great performances for us to choose from for this week's Vivid Seats Performance of the Week Award, but we believe Nate Leshesky's 18 point three rebound effort against Wake Forest was the most significant. Here's a look at some of his highlights from that game. Great, yeah. Do it all the time, yeah. any time of the day. Yeah. See me I'm shining, I'm 
Nate obviously very good, very efficient, six for eight from the floor, three of five from three point land, but he also incorporated an aggressiveness and physicality, a lot like Durham, that he hasn't been able to successfully incorporate with good offensive output. That's uh, a great point, Jack. Uh, again, I thought he was great defensively and he's always plugged in defensively. A Couple of post moves he made, he made them more physical than before. A Couple shots that he rose up to took, take, he, he rose up very confident, hockey-like, and, and that's who I think he can be. So I'm hoping the weight game will be a reference point for the Nate Leshevsky progress. And I think he found that when he got to the backboard with more strength behind his attack, it was easier to make the shot. No question, I think it's good in there. He knows he's gonna get fouled, he can drive and dunk it. Um, he has put it on the floor and made better plays off the dribble. Uh, it's just, you know, he, he just, I, I, I'm watching him in the midst of it, I'm going here, he's arrived. Now here he comes, Prentice has arrived. Goodwin has arrived. Leshevsky, Nate, join them, and let's see where we take this thing, because I think we can really get on a run with those three guys confident. And now is the great time to try to get on that run. The longest conference homestand of the season for Notre Dame continues with home games against Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh. We'll talk about the upcoming challenges for the Irish right after this final timeout. You know, I've always found it fascinating, and I've talked to you about this before, but of all the rivalries you're building in the ACC, <laughs> the one with Georgia Tech is as competitive as any in the league for you. It's kind of been a sneaky good one in the ACC, hasn't it? All our games, game situations, when we were in Atlanta just a couple weeks ago, a great college game, and I expect the same today. It's a Saturday noon game later on today as the show airs in the South Bend market. And it's also special because Kelly Trapuca will be inducted into the Notre Dame Ring of Honor. I know you're very excited about that. Yeah, I think that's a big day. You know, starting that Ring of Honor has been great to bring back our former great players and class acts. Uh, Bob Whitmore last year, Kelly was one of the easiest decisions ever. He should be up in those rafters. A Notre Dame family with the connection with his father here. His brothers are coming back. That family grew up on this campus. It's going to be an amazing reunion. Many of his teammates from our Final Four team in 78 will be back. I'm very excited about having him around. No question. It's going to be fun. You know, one of the keys to interviewing is never ask a question when you're not sure the kind of answer you're going to get. I don't know if you're even going to talk about Pittsburgh because you guys are so focused on the next game right now. Well, you know, you're right. I mean, I've, I've been so locked in on them, and Pittsburgh is much improved and playing better, but I don't know much about them. I've been kind of in my Georgia Tech window right now, and, you know, on Super Bowl Sunday is when we'll, we'll, di we'll dig in before the Super Bowl to Pittsburgh. But the homestand's important because you then head in and we'll talk about this next week, but maybe the most difficult four-game schedule I've ever seen. I don't think Notre Dame's ever played anything like that. You know, uh, we, we certainly didn't when we were in the Big East. Uh, there's probably no way we did when we were an independent. Um, yeah, I, 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 when I glanced at that, when the schedule came out back in the fall, I'm like, whew, I don't want to look at that again, and I am not going to look at it again until the Thursday after Pittsburgh. All right, it's four games in nine days. We'll talk about it next week when we will also show you all the highlights of Notre Dame's home games against Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching us every week, for supporting this gritty basketball team, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM.